Hello everyone, today I want to show you how to build an efficient melon or pumpkin farm. First I want to clear a misconception what makes an efficient melon or pumpkin farm. So many people would think that this uh, melon stem setup would be more efficient than this one because it has more stems. But in fact this setup produces a pumpkin every 3.5 minutes and besides the this setup has only four stems in contrast to the nine here. It produces a pumpkin every 2.3 minutes. The reason for this discrepancy is how the Minecraft growth algorithm works. As you can see here in this setup, there's a lot of hydrated farmland surrounding the stems, which increases the generation of melons or pumpkins. I blocked the farmland is directly next to the stem with a string, so no melon or pumpkin could grow there, but the string doesn't destroy the farmland. You could also use carpets or flowers uh, for the same effect. Also, the stems could grow to two sides, which also increases the growth speed. And with this setup here, the melon or pumpkin can only grow to one side. Here's a best case scenario for a pumpkin stem. So with only a single uh, stem, a pumpkin would generate on average every 4.5 minutes, which is almost as fast as those nine stems. Crop generation in Minecraft is dependent on random ticks. Every game tick, the game randomly selects a few blocks in the world for a block update. So if one of those random ticks selects a melon or pumpkin stem, there's a certain chance for a melon or pumpkin to grow. This chance is dependent on the eight blocks that surround the stem. By turning the dirt into hydrated farmland, you could increase the chance for a melon or pumpkin to grow. Basically, you get a few uh, base points for the hydrated farmland under the stem and additional bonus points for hydrated farmland surrounding the stem. Also, it's important that the stem has several sides to grow to. So after selecting the melon or pumpkin stem, uh, it's randomly decided in which, uh, si on which side the pumpkin would grow. If the location that's selected isn't available for pumpkin growth, the attempt is just aborted. So that's why this setup is uh, optimal for fast pumpkin generation. In this example here, there would be only one side where the pumpkin or melon could grow to, which decreases the yeah, generation uh, by a lot. So with this knowledge, you could, for example, inc uh, improve a popular uh, setup uh, for for a melon and pumpkin farm. Um, you might know it where you would stack up several layers on top of each other in a tower. So with this uh, stem setup, a pumpkin would generate every four minutes, but you could increase the chance by adding uh, farmland on the side and covering the farmland where the melon could uh, directly grow to uh, with carpet for example or string. So with this setup a pumpkin would generate every 2.9 minutes. For a villager trading setup I needed a lag friendly, stackable, easy to build pumpkin farm. Because pumpkin towers kind of awkward to build, I decided against them. And that was the version I went with. To make it lag friendly, I used no hoppers, no minecarts, no block update detectors, no tile entities, no redstone torches because of the light updates, and no redstone dust. It's not uh, well known that redstone dust creates a lot of lag if you, use, if you use it in huge quantities. So basically I used this setup here that creates a pumpkin every 2.3 minutes with um, four stems, which is more than a pumpkin tower setup could generate. 
and I covered the fountain with water so no pumpkin could grow there but the farmland isn't destroyed by the water also the flowing water hydrates the farmland it's also quite useful this farm is really easy to build as you might see and easily expandable the only thing that's missing at the moment here is a clock that would um, activate the the pistons. Uh, what's noteworthy is that I use slabs here because if you would stack it on top of each other you would need a wall of iron bars to stop the flowing water. And um, slabs don't connect to iron bars so that's why I use them there. If you would use a solid block like an iron block for example or a stone block uh, the iron bar would uh, connect there and the pumpkins would get caught up so that's why the slabs here and the way the pistons are powered is uh, in a sequence by those repeaters which also help to spread the lag out in uh, really big versions speaking of big versions um, to show you that um, this setup is really lag friendly I made this form here with MC edit it would generate 1 million melon slices per hour and yeah, what it does it's actually quite compact the size is 130 by 100 by 160 The farm is controlled by this clock here that has um, 320 items in there so you get a signal every 4.25 minutes and yeah I would say let's turn it on and see the result. So the farm has been idling a while and the rates were because of that higher and also the lag but now the farm has been running for 50 minutes and now it's stabilized so yeah let's see some rates so let's clear the inventory and yeah it fills up rather quickly I would say and inventory filled yeah and the fact that I have a yeah, below average computer and still can record while a farm is running that produces one million melon slices I guess that says it all because it's really easy to build, I will make a tutorial. So, build a two-wide lane, depending how big you want to farm, uh, that long will it be. Then every second block, add another dirt block. Then add some blocks on the side, and then go down by one of the slabs. Uh, the block on the back could also be a non-slab block. Uh, yeah, fill it up also some blocks on the side again then the iron bars could also use fences whatever is cheapest for you whoops okay and that's a little bit tricky because you need to place the water on top of the farmland you can't um, tilt the dirt afterwards so there is a chance that it would revert back to dirt, but if you're quick enough, um, yeah, you will get it. And now the next four blocks are also hydrated, so you can place water again. Then again four blocks and yeah, add the rest of the water. Then also turn uh, those blocks into farmland and cover them with either carpets, string, or flowers. I think fern also works. Then you need to add the pistons. Oh, that's one on the back. And add a block in front. You could use also use a glass block. Then turn those blocks in between into farmland. Plant your melon or pumpkin seed. Next step is add blocks on top of the pistons and on the side. 
and add the repeaters. So that's pretty much it. All that's left to do is add your favorite clock. I mostly use TTSUR Minecraft's hopper clock or my uh, unbreakable um, hopper clock that yeah isn't affected by the item duplication in uh, in hoppers. But because it's easier to build, I'll just make TTSUR Minecraft's hopper clock now. So torches help us and comparators and a torch in front then one item in here and in here would just put uh, the maximum amount of items yep. uh, don't forget to add light sources because the stems need at least light level 9 above them so just add some torches or glowstone blocks. Um, every other block is enough for the torches. And I want to show you how to stack the farms on top of each other. So a layer would be every third block or fourth block, however, you, how closely you want to build it to, together. And then at the end, where that repeater goes in that block, just add a torch and another torch and then some redstone dust and yeah, the repeaters go into the other direction then we would have a, another layer uh, yeah just repeat it also you need to have a yeah wall of iron bars or fences here because the items could land on top of the bars um, if yeah, there isn't a, a wall. Also, um, you could use one repeater for two pistons, so if you would just mirror that part, you could have uh, another cell right there. So this piston gets butt powered and yeah, this piston updates it. Yeah, and obviously you would get also a pulse there. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.